Okay. Hi, everybody. For those of you that just joined, uh, my name is Jordan. I'm the resident director of Lower West Cedar. And today I'm going to be discussing pride in the 21st century. Thank you, first off, for joining us. As you all know, June is Pride Awareness Month. So we are very excited to be kicking it off or rather ending it um, with discussing, you know, other kind of where Pride came from and who is a part of it and what our flag represents, et cetera. So if you can see behind me, I actually have a Pride flag right here at home. Um, this isn't the most updated pride flag, but it is probably the one that you have seen before, you're familiar with. Um, it's a little emoji on your iPhone. So this is a very, very common one. Um, and I'm actually going to rip it down. And we are going to be talking about what these colors mean. So I do have a little bit of notes on my phone. So just bear with me. Okay. So for starters, this pride flag specifically has six colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And this wasn't always the case. We actually sometimes had more, we sometimes had different shapes and symbols, but I'm gonna go over what each of these colors symbolize because this is the most commonly used flag. So for red, it represents life. For orange, it represents healing for all the battles that have been fought for the LGBTQ community. For yellow, it represents sunlight, essentially how we are going to be breaking through and just getting through whatever struggles that and hardships we faced. For green here, we have nature. For blue, we have serenity. And for purple, we have spirit. So when you look at this flag, of course, yes, it's a beautiful one. But that's kind of the symbolism that goes behind each color. I want to hang it back up, for, but for time's sake, I will just wear it like this. Okay. So, um, in the past, there have been a couple other colors to go with it. There was an additional pink stripe on the end, and that represented sex. And there was a uh, light blue stripe that represented magic and art. However, the companies that were producing these flags found that there was too much going on. So they decided at that time to simplify it into six colors, which are the ones that you see here, the stereotypical rainbow. So um, once they had eight colors, they actually added a ninth color for it to be a lavender purple that was above the pink. And that represents diversity. So now we weren't just looking at the LGBTQ white community, but the inclusivity of having all different people, different people of color, um, people from different backgrounds, diversity, incorporate everyone to kind of give that family feel. So once they decided to chop this flag from nine colors to six, which is what you see right here, they added one more color on the bottom to make it seven again. Very wishy-washy with numbers, um, but this is how the timeline went. The, the final color that they added to it was a black stripe. Now, the black stripe represented AIDS. Um, this was a huge movement from Freddie Mercury during um, the, the AIDS concert. It was amazing. You could go on YouTube and watch it. Super informative, super good time. Um, he was diagnosed, but he decided to dedicate his music and that platform to raise money, and they did a remarkable job. Also, I would like to put out Bohemian Rhapsody is a movie that's based off of Freddie Mercury and his band's career for Queen, um, and they did an amazing job portraying um, what that benefit concert looked like. Rami Malek actually played um, Freddie, and he did a terrific job. A uh, little fun fact, actually, right after I saw that movie, I was in the city at a restaurant and I looked over to my left and Rami Malek was actually sitting there eating next to me. And I wanted to get up and say, hey, thank you so much for doing such an amazing job. You really did an amazing um, job, like being a representative. I believe Rami Malek is actually straight. Um, and I know some people do prefer to have queer people playing queer characters, 
Um, but you know what? In this case, extremely forgivable because he really embodied Freddy, and that's what we needed it from that film. Um, so in my opinion, he did a great job, and I highly recommend Bohemian Rhapsody. So going back to the flag, you may have seen colors that are also like this. It's teal on the top and the bottom, pink, the two inner stripes, and then the, the middle stripe is white. This is the transgender flag. So we're kind of now seeing the LGBTQ community not only starting to welcome people of color, but they're also starting to open the doors to let transgender folk um, to be a part of this movement as well. So they have a transgender flag um, and they also have an LGBTQ pride flag. They then decided, you know what? We're kind of one community and it is a little silly to have all these different flags, but to have a flag with a hundred different colors would be a little less realistic. So what they ended up doing, this is the most recent flag that they have now. If you take a look, we got the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, um, and then we have an arrow that has a transgender colors, um, of the transgender flag colors, which is white, pink, and teal. And then we also have a brown and black stripe. So now the main part is giving us LGBTQ, and then the arrow is giving us LGBTQ people of color with transgender people as well. The reason why you saw the little arrow, I thought, oh, you know, they just wanted to incorporate it without, you know, with it also still looking nice. But the reason for the arrow is because it, it's kind of the fight, how you always have to go forward. So the arrow is pointing, um, showing that this new community is making their way not only into LGBTQ, but into society, into 2020. What does that look like right now? Um, so that's essentially the little history about the flag. Um, the person that created this most recent flag that I just showed you, um, this one with the arrow, his name is Daniel Quasar. Um, they call it the Progress Pride Flag, I guess because it's always going to be um, changing. And this is the one that has been like the most like socially um, acceptable, even though it's not the most popular one right now. You know, someday we might be able to see our emojis on our phone having little flag emojis like this one. Um, which is awesome. You know, it's amazing that we have this, but how cool would it be if we one day get to see the most updated pride flag that also represents for all these other different people as well. So it's really awesome. Um, so now what I wanted to do is talk to you guys about a little social media um, and by social media, what you're seeing on TV. So right now we're in quarantine and luckily New York state is doing the best it's, it can. And, uh, but you know, we're still in a spot where we have to um, social distance and be very safe. And even if that's not the case, I know everybody's still watching Netflix, everyone's still watching Hulu. So I'm here to talk to you guys today about three really big platforms um, that represent queer culture in media. Um, and I'm really excited to tell you guys about them because Two of them are thing, uh, shows and movies that I've been watching. I um, mean, one of them is actually one that has been recommended to me a number of times and I haven't gotten around to it yet. So the first one we're gonna talk about today is Pose. So Pose is a Netflix original show um, and it's about the underground ball scene focusing heavily on trans women of color. So when you think of ball scenes, like ball dancing, um, that might not be the first thing that comes to mind. You might think of people in beautiful outfits, um, men and women, maybe a white heterosexual couple, maybe a black heterosexual couple. But it, the foundation from the show shows that it really was focusing heavily on trans women of color. Um, and that's kind of where the underground ball scene came from. It had a really heavily heavy influence on this queer culture. They also, going back to Freddie Mercury, talk about the HIV epidemic. Um, they talk about queer culture of voguing and fashion and how much it, um, and how much trans black women um, really impacted this scene. Um, so like I said, this is on Netflix, it's called Pose. It is a remarkable show that is very emotional, very educational, very entertaining. Um, so highly recommend. The second thing we're gonna talk about is a movie that came out a few years ago, I believe in 2018, called Love, Simon. 
So Love, Simon depicts a little bit more of what the common eye might think about what gay is. Um, a lot of people, when they think of queer, they'll go right to the, um, the majority, which is perhaps a white queer man um, or a gay male rather. Um, and Love, Simon really depicts what this story looks like. Now, everybody has their own story of coming out and everyone has their own story of what that experience was like. But this movie did such a great job of capturing what that is for this this young man named Simon. So Simon, um, he's a boy going through a life um, as a closeted gay person. And throughout the movie, you see a lot of nuances where his dad is making references of like, oh, do you have any girlfriends? Like, I bet you're so into those girls. Like, oh, that girl you brought over yesterday, I bet you and her are like getting together. Um, so it's just a lot of gender norms and you can see how uncomfortable Simon is. Um, we also get to see what his experience is like with his friends still thinking he's straight. Something that I really appreciate of this movie is that his lifelong friends he had a harder time coming out to than when he met a new girl, um, he was able to come out to her a little bit sooner. Now, I don't wanna spoil everything, so I'm gonna kind of reel back in some of these details. It's just something I'm very passionate about. It was a really awesome movie. Um, but you kind of get to see what his experience is like coming out to his friends versus coming out to his family versus coming out to strangers. Um, and unfortunately, in a defense mechanism and not brutally in any kind of way, um, he does get caught up in a couple of lies because he's not trying to hurt anyone, but he's really just trying to remain what he thinks public wants of him. So. Love, Simon was a very successful movie, like I said, it came out in, I, be I believe, 2018, and they made a spinoff series, Love, Victor, which is right now trending on Hulu. So I have not yet watched Love, Victor, but um, it's a mini series that's on Hulu. I don't know how similar or different his experience is to Simon. I know Simon depicts a more masculine presenting uh, gay man. I, Victor might be uh, presenting a little bit more feminine. Maybe he's more masculine. There's this range and, you know, you don't even have to label yourself. You could be masculine, you could be fem feminine, you could be a mix of both, or you could be really anywhere in between. The final thing I want to talk to you guys about today is Drag Race. So Drag Race is a reality TV show, um, which is my guilty pleasure. I've always been watching reality TV shows such as Flavor of Love, I Love New York, Rock of Love, Big Brother, Survivor. It's just that competitive nature that really draws me in. Um, and what's great about this one is that it's all the competition of being the ultimate drag queen. So every season they gather approximately 13 to 14 drag queens and they put them through an array of challenges. Some of the challenges are going to focus on fashion and sewing. Some of the challenges are for makeup, singing, dancing, designing. It's really just a realm of being a incredibly entertaining person while being able to present queer art. Um, it's a show that I didn't think I would enjoy. And then somebody finally sat me down and I watched and I loved it. Um, my mother, who is a 59 year old, um, sorry, mom, she's an older woman. Um, she, I sat her down once and I showed her an episode where they were um, doing, they were creating a hotel scene by painting and then having to do skits with it. Um, and she fell in love and she actually, it's amazing to see someone um, that is a different generation than me being able to enjoy this show. Is it because it's competitive? Is it because it's art? Is it because it's drag? I'm not sure, but it is a really great way to introduce drag queer culture into our society because everybody loves TV. A lot of people are into, um, you know, rom-coms or telenovelas. Um, and in this case, like I said, this is a reality competitive TV show. There's still drama. There's still people crying and sharing background stories which makes it great for viewing, but it's also great for art. Um, so that's really all I have today. Um, as I mentioned, I, I honestly looked up so much about the flag and I got to learn a great bit about it. Um, ways that you could be an advocate is you could, um, you know, respectfully continue doing your research and asking questions. 
Um, I never knew anyone gay growing up, but I feel like had I known someone gay, I would be able to kind of ask a little bit more about their experience, of course, making sure that they're comfortable. Um, you're also more than welcome to utilize your social media platform. Um, gay Pride ends in a, the Gay Pride Month ends in a few hours, but that doesn't mean you can't continue celebrating. Um, posting uh, maybe the Pride flag on your story on Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook, um, and maybe saying, hey, if anyone's interested in learning more about this, um, here's a link on YouTube that kind of goes into the flag, or you could even share your education based off what we talked about with what that little arrow means, what these colors represent. It's important that we keep the conversation going. Um, right now, we're focusing a lot on Black Lives Matter, um, given the climate of what's going on today. Um, this month, I wanted to give a little bit of extra love to the Black Lives, the All Black Lives Matter, such as the Black Queer Lives. Um, so there's plenty of organizations that you could also donate to. Um, so I guess going forward, it, all you got to do is just be open minded, ask questions and take a look at what resources are out there. Um, and if anybody ever needs to talk to someone, um, you guys, of course, could go to Counseling Center. You could talk to your RAs. You could talk to your RDs. My name is Jordan. As I mentioned, I'm in Lower West Cedar, and you could reach out to me. Um, I'm more than happy to talk. I'm more than happy to discuss, answer questions, or just be a listening ear. Well, anyway, so that's going to conclude today. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, this will be on um, the Maris page as well. So if you want to review it, um, those of you that are watching it not live, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I appreciate it. And I hope you all have a wonderful, safe summer. Um, and if you guys need me, feel free to contact me at jordan.pappas.maris.edu. Thank you all and have a great day.